For the second row of the basket bottom, we're going to create a double layer. You're going to yarn over and work two sing or two half double crochets in each stitch, only working in the back loop. So there's one and two. Do this all the way around, again working only in the back loop of each stitch around. I've completed the first round of round two, working in the back loops only. Skip this slip stitch as you continue to work. You're not going to join at the end of the row. Instead, you're going to start working or continue working the same stitch pattern of two half double crochets in each stitch but only work in the front loop, creating a second layer. I find it easiest to just fold that backside over, yarn over, grab that front loop, and work your two half double crochets. There's one. Two. And then continue that all the way around to the beginning, working two half double crochets in the front loop of each stitch around. I have completed both layers of round two. As you can see, there is a back layer and a front layer going all the way around. This is going to create that thick texture of the bottom. To join the round, find that first stitch that you made, insert your hook, and then find the first stitch of the first layer insert your hook and join all those with a slip stitch. For round three, we are going to crochet both layers together to create that thick fabric. So chain one, and we're gonna do an increase, traditional increase round. So work two half double crochets in that first stitch, working through both stitches. As you can see, I went through the first layer and the second layer. Complete two half double crochets, In the next stitch, work one half double crochet going through both layers. There's layer one, layer two. Complete your half double crochet. Repeat this going around. Two half double crochets. And then one half double crochet. Continue around. Continue working the repeat rows following the double layer, single layer pattern until you have reached the desired size of the bottom of your basket or your pot holder. Today I'm going to be using my sample to cover this old candle jar and I wanted to show you that it is right at the right size all the way around. So I'm going to stop here and continue to make the turn of my basket. Once the size of your basket has been completed, you're going to want to work a final round of single crochets. If your last row is in my sample is a double layer, make sure you work through both layers to crochet them together. If your last layer was a single layer, go ahead and just work a traditional row of single crochets. Again, just a reminder, work this row loosely, work all the way around, and then join with a slip stitch. After your final row has been completed, we're going to start working the edge of the basket and creating a turn so that the basket can start coming up. To do that, we're going to work around a front post single crochets. To work a front post single crochet, you're going to go into the stitch and then around the post and back out and then complete a single crochet. Go into the next stitch, around the post, and complete that single crochet. Do this all the way around and then join with a slip stitch. When turning rows on the basket, you're going to work your row, second row as a row of single crochets. I've already completed that here. Row three, you're going to chain one, pull that chain a little bit tighter, and we're going to work a spike stitch in each stitch around. A spike stitch is just working over the top of the single crochet from the prior row. So insert your hook into the base of where the last single crochet was worked. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, and you've completed your spike stitch. Again, go into where the base of the stitch is, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on hook. 
Continue this all the way around. Go down into the base of that stitch. You're going to insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull it up to the height of your hook, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, pull up to the height of the loop, and pull through all loops on hook. Now go to the next stitch, or go into the skip stitch, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, and pull up your loop, yarn over, and pull through all four loops on your hook. You're going to repeat. Again, you're going to skip this next stitch, go down into the base of the stitch of the next one, pull up your loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through all loops on your hook, and then you're going to come back and work into this skipped stitch. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. You're going to go into the stitch one row below of the next stitch. You'll see it as the back side of the sideways diagonal of the woven from the prior row. Insert your hook in there, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up another loop, yarn over, pull through all loops on your hook. Then you're going to cross back over and work into the skipped stitch of the current row. Insert your stitch or hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up another loop, yarn over, pull through all loops on hook. Repeat this around. Again, you're going to drop down one row, work in here, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all loops on hook, cross over into the sti skipped stitch to complete the second part of the woven. To work a reverse single crochet, you're going to work going in the opposite direction. Insert your hook into the stitch on your right, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on hook just like a regular single crochet. Again, going in the opposite direction, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops on your hook. Continue this all the way around your basket to create this nice finished rolled edge along the top.